Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. We have a relatively short gospel passage for today. Short by comparison to the account of temptation of Jesus in the other gospels. I think it is in Luke and in Matthew that the three temptations of Christ were mentioned in greater detail. Sa ating ibanghelyo ngayon, it was enough for Mark to point to these things. Number one, Jesus was led by the Spirit in the desert to be tempted by the evil one. Second, he was with wild beasts. Third, angels waited on him. Babalikan ko natin yung three points na yan. But first, let me share that when I re read the gospel, I remembered na nung mga bata pa kami, we were four currently studying in the family, I think grade three, four, five, six, medyo sunod-sunod kami. My mother, who is a teacher, decided to distribute us into four corners of our home para pagdating ng gabi, bawal manood ng television on weekdays, pupunta kami sa kanya-kanyang corner at kailangang mag-aral kami. Why? Separately, para hindi namin madistorbo ang isa't isa, we do not distract each other or worse, we do not quarrel with each other. But what happened in this early social distancing? Siguro first five minutes, tahimik kaming nag-aaral sa kanya-kanyang sulok ng bahay. Until, one would think, ah, iinom muna ako. So, kukuha ng tubig. Mamaya, hindi lang tubig, may makikitang saging doon, kakain. Yung iba, ah, ako'y mag Liligo muna, ako'y magsi-CR muna, ako'y hihiram ng ballpen, ako'y hihiram ng eraser, ako'y hihiram ng uh, sharpener, ako'y gagawin ko muna ito, magbabasa muna ako ng charyo, pupunta muna ako doon, magpapahinga muna ako, hihiga muna ako. My parents will call these excuses as patalastas, commercials. Why? Well, it's like watching your favorite telenovela. One and a half hour of telenovela, 30 minutes of telenovela, one hour of advertisements. Ganun din yata ang nangyayari sa amin. Dapat we have to study. But what is happening? Commercial dito, commercial doon, commercial dito, commercial doon, until finally, we will eventually be cramming for tomorrow's lessons. Now, I start with that because in the gospel, in the short gospel of St. Mark, this was just after the baptism of Jesus. And after the baptism of Jesus, his public ministry was about to start. And what was his ministry? Alam natin simply lang, to bring back salvation to humanity, to save us from our sins to keep us away from darkness. But before he set out on this very important mission, the devil was there, I think the right term was to derail him, to tempt him. Ito munang gawin natin. Why don't you consider this? Why don't you focus simply on yourself? Do not focus on your task at hand. Let us have a little segue. Medyo derailment muna tayo. But Jesus knew of his mission 
and Jesus rejected the temptation of the evil one. If the Israelites listen to this gospel passage, they will immediately recall that this was not the first time that the devil is trying to derail someone, to keep someone away from God. In fact, the first moment when the devil was quite successful in keeping humanity away from God happened in Genesis. In Genesis, God created everything and it was good. And notice, the wild beasts, yung mga leon, yung mga tigre, yung mga uh, agila, they came to Adan para ibigay ni Adan kung ano ang itatawag sa kanila. There was harmony in the Garden of Eden. The wild beasts and man together with his wife Eve until the evil one in the form of a serpent tempted them. Sounds familiar. And the serpent was successful in derailing, keeping them away from the original plan of God. So nagkasala si Adan at saka si Eva, anong nangyari? There was enmity between man, woman, and the serpent. There was suffering. There was sin. There was disobedience to God. So the Israelites, in listening to the account of Mark, will remember Adan. But this time, this Adan, the new Adan, Jesus Christ, was successful in resisting the temptation once again of the serpent or of the evil one. He did not give in to temptation. So anong nangyari nung hindi nagsakamp sa temptation ang ating Panginoon? As I have said in the beginning of the Mass, it was one of the first of many victories of Jesus against darkness, against sin, against death, against the evil one. He was now with the wild beast. Wag kayong magalala. Hindi sinasakta ng ating panginon, because he did not give in to temptation. The picture that Mark paints to his listeners is once again the renewal of paradise. The Son of Man. Jesus was ministered by the angels along with the wild beasts. And this is the start of bringing humanity back to the original plan of God. Now in this picture, Mark is not telling us, the church is not telling us, Na resist temptation and look for a snake, look for a lion and try to be with the lion or the snake. No, that is uh, too literal an interpretation of the gospel. But at the beginning of Lent and in this gospel passage, Mark invites us to look into derailment. Tagalog is this karil. May, may track yung train. Hindi pwedeng lumabas dun sa track. Pag nakdiskaril, ibig sabihin, you are out of focus. You are out of the journey. The gospel in the beginning of Lent invites us to what may derail us, what may keep us away from meaningful life, from God's original purpose, from our vocation in life. Yes, there are big 
temptations. And these temptations can radically derail us. Pag nanakaw, pag patay sa tao, a rejection of the Ten Commandments, these are the big temptations. But there are subtle temptations that in the beginning are not really bad. For example, naku, nawiwili na ako sa online shopping. Naku, araw-araw na lang, basketball ginagawa ko. Maganda yun, exercise. But I have some things to do. I have a focus in life. I have things to accomplish. Naku, napapasarap yata yung chismis ko. Naku, napaparami yata yung gadgets ko. Naku, na... Aadik yata ko sa online games or uh, things that in the beginning are not really harmful. But they have the power to derail us, to keep us out of our missions in life, to keep us out of focus, to keep us away from God or at least not reaching our goal to achieve what God has intended for us. And so, dear friends, the gospel reminds us that the devil, as he has always been, is cunning. Matalino. Matalino. Hindi tayo bibiglain, hindi tayo bibigyan talaga ng masamang uh, temptation. Little by little. Sharpener, inumuna, Magpahinga muna until at the end of the day, we are already cramming into accomplishing what we in the first place should have been working on. Jesus was victorious against the temptation of the evil one. And Jesus encourages us, models for us, that we too at the beginning of Lent, Magbawas-bawas muna ng chismis, magbawas-bawas muna ng too much of this and too much of that, and go back to our essential mission in life. What is that mission in life? That which makes our life meaningful. That which makes us relevant to others. That which allows us to participate in God's goodness. That which keeps us close to truth. To keep that which keeps us according to the beauty of God's teaching, that which would make us remain to be sons and daughters of the Father. Again, there will be and there will always be derailment or an attempt to allow us to lose focus in life. Jesus and the church in this season brings us back to that focus, to that direction, to our vocation, to what we must understand and live out as meaningful lives. We came from God. We belong to God. The gospel reminds us we ought always to remain in the loving embrace, teaching, and actions 